four bet pre, 6,000 on the flop, 25,000 on the turn, and all in on the river. Could you call $57,500 with just pocket deuces on this board? And he lets it's it go. Full deuces? Yeah. Oh my god. Did not, you did not come to fold today. That clip you just saw is from early in this gigantic session at Hustler Casino Live, where Rampage Poker pulled off a savage bluff against Nick Airball, who's really close to calling with a tiny pair. By now, well later in the session, Nick probably got word that he was bluffed. So keep that in mind heading into this hand. Raise 2,000. Rampage, ace king off suit. Air ball. Going to three bet to 10,000 with ace three. Rampage just called. They're playing 200, 400, 800. Rampage Poker raises it up in the cutoff with the ace king off suit, playing $350,000 deep. About 400 big blinds. All right. He makes it 2,000 bucks. Over to Nick Airball in the straddle. He has the ace three off suit and bumps it up to 10,000. 2,000 all the way up to 10. Rampage decides to call kind of quickly. Kind of casually, he's in there. He's not afraid. To be fair, he should be calling quite wide in this scenario with all sorts of suited hands in position playing super deep stack. So he's really not going to do a lot of folding. Uh, some people may think he should just automatically format the ace king. That's more of a tournament strategy where you're playing somewhat shallow stack and just happy to get it in. Here, if you format to, let's say, what, 32,000 or 28,000, something like that, and then Nick Airball makes it 120. Starts to become a pretty marginal spot where now you're going to be getting it in roughly flipping with your ace king, which is certainly not where you want to be. So you're going to find that deep stacked, well, super deep stacked, calling the ace king against the three bet in position is usually a perfectly fine play. And that is exactly what Rampage does. Let's head to the flop. Ace high flop. How much could airball lose? Queen, queen, deuce. Ace king is good. Six. I mean, it's hard to fold anything at this point to airball, right? I mean, the way he's going. Ball comes queen, queen, two. No flush draw for either player. No backdoor flush draw for either player. And Nick Airball goes for a 6,000 bet, a tiny bet into the $20,000 pot. And you may ask, why is he doing this? Typically, in GTO world, on paired boards, you usually want to be betting frequently using a small size when your opponent's range contains a lot of the trips. And in this scenario, certainly Rampage is going to have a lot of hands containing a queen, right? He's not going to fold any of the suited hands containing a queen preflop unless they were especially terrible, like queen three suited, maybe. So this is a spot where Nick wants to just nudge a little bit of money in the pot, assuming he has a range advantage. Now, I'm not sure Nick actually has a range advantage because Nick Airball's last name is Airball. Airball means don't have very many good hands. And if he doesn't have very many good hands because he just gets in there and blasts, his competent opponents are going to realize that, right? So if your competent opponents realize your range contains perhaps too many bluffs, I don't know if that's the case, but maybe, then maybe you're not even supposed to be betting this type of board all that often. That said, if you are three betting the ace three offsuit, you're not really trying to check and then fold on queen, queen two. So I like the bet, but if you do bet the flop in this situation, you definitely need to be ready to continue bluffing on a lot of turns, essentially trying to call it represent a hand like aces or ace-queen, or king-queen. You're essentially going to try to make your opponent think you have the nuts by the river, and having the ace blocker in your hand is quite good because you know it's way less likely now that Rampage has a few of the super nut hands, mainly aces and ace-queen. So I like the small bet as long as you continue bluffing on the later betting rounds. I will say, Rampage is not much of a folder, but maybe he's not the ideal person to try to be bluffing against. And when you do get this type of dynamic where you have a super aggressive player like Nick Airball out of position against a super call-happy player like Rampage, it usually does not work out for the super aggressive player like Nick because Rampage is just going to find the call button a lot. He's going to call, 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 and if he loses, he loses. And that's a really good strategy against players who do re-raise and then bluff it off far too often. Let's see if Rampage can find a call as we proceed to the turn. $6,000 bet, $6,000 call. There's another queen. Ace-King is the nuts right now. But does Rampage know it? 
That's $33,000 in the pot. Blank check Ben in the chat says, I know his pain. I've had nights like this too. Yeah, if you play poker long enough, you certainly have. Airball goes 30,000. What does Rampage do with just Ace King? He's gonna make the call. 92,900 in the pot. Nick does continue the aggression on the queen turn. Now he's basically saying I have a full house with aces full, or maybe kings full, or maybe jacks full, or a queen. And to be fair, Nick will have a lot of queens in his range pre-flop. I think he would certainly consider three betting, ace, queen, king, queen, queen, jack, queen, four suited for all I know. So this is a spot where I think Nick actually does have a decent amount of nuts. His problem though, is he has a decent amount of air balls with ace x offsuit like he has, also some king x offsuit or suited, also a lot of suited connected type hands that would have flopped a backdoor flush draw that would certainly want to keep betting and then what they'll have under cards on the turn. So betting becomes reasonable as well. So he goes for the bluff, but I don't really see how Rampage can fold a hand like Ace-King. Ace-King is excellent in this scenario because it beats all bluffs. And if you think your opponent's range is tilted towards bluffs, then it's an excellent hand to call with. Also, Ace-King is pretty good to call with here because it blocks aces, kings, ace-queen, and king-queen, all of which are pretty obvious value hands that Nick would want to have. So if Nick is naturally inclined to bluff, or at least Rampage thinks that, and Rampage has excellent blockers to the nuts, then this becomes an amazing hand to call with. Maybe even better than a hand like pocket threes, right? Because even though pocket threes is a full house, it's better. It has horrible blockers, right? Because it's just more likely that Nick Airball has those nut hands we just listed. So this is a situation where you'd actually much prefer to have Ace King to a hand like pocket threes. Plus Ace King has some outs to improve. If Nick Airball does happen to have jacks or even kings, you know, Ace King has some number of outs that can randomly spike on the river. So this is a spot where you absolutely cannot fold Ace King. If you're folding Ace King against a loose aggressive player in position, you're going to get completely run over. So nice, easy call from Rampage going or on the turn. Let's head to the river. River's the eight of diamonds. The river is the eight of diamonds. Putting up a flush. Nick Airball thinks for a bit and goes for a hundred thousand dollar bet. Maybe a touch more into the ninety-two thousand dollar pot. Let's see if Rampage can find a call. There's a call. Oh my god. Airball just bet a hundred and ten thousand dollars. And Rampage took about three seconds to make the call. Wow. Snap call with ace high. Snap called with ace king. I thought it's a good hand. $313,000 pot. And Rampage just won himself another monster pot off of airball. Hmm. Unreal. Interesting. I wish I'd been bluffing with the dupes. Rampage pretty much immediately calls with the ace king. And I actually love it, especially when you have a random king of diamonds blocker to block some sporadic, weirdly played flushes. And again, you block the aces and the kings and the ace king and the king queen. This is just a call. A lot of people would not have made the call here. A lot of people would think that, oh man, oh, he could have me beat. He obviously has a full house. He's playing it like a full house. That's what he's representing. You got to realize people who get in there and blast and love to bluff they don't always have what they're representing. And to be fair, when someone is representing something, if anything, Nick Airball here is representing a queen or a good full house or nothing. And this time he happened to have the nothing and Rampage scoops a big pot. What I wanna know is what is the gutsiest call you have ever made? Let me know in the comments section below. I've made plenty of big calls in my life. The fun thing is, is that as you make more and more big calls, you realize they're not actually that big of calls. They're just standard. Like right here, I think Rampage's call is actually just standard. It does look like a huge, amazing, extravagant pot. But like I said, you block all the value. Easy call against someone who likes to bluff. End of story. Sometimes you end up losing $150,000 in the pot, but you know, sometimes you end up winning. And this time Rampage scoop-a-looped a nice one.
I actually have another video lined up for you where Rampage battles it out in another gigantic pot against Wesley the Liquidator. Make sure you check that one out right after this video. Good luck in your games. Have fun. Huge thanks to all of these players for playing in this game and producing this amazing content for us. Thanks to the Hustler Casino Live. Thanks to all of you for being here. I appreciate all of you. Without you here watching today, I would not be here either. Good luck in your games. Have fun. Click the like and subscribe button down there and make sure you check out the next video where Rampage gets in there and battles it out again. I'll talk to you next time.